Hi, welcome back, and in today's module, we will be looking at the Word Cloud. Now, the Word Cloud is developed and published by Microsoft, and it's a great visual for looking at perhaps maybe more unstructured data that you have. If you have large amounts of text data and you want to really be able to mine through it and determine perhaps the number of frequency or the number of times a word appears, it allows you to do that very easily. So if you want to look at a measure against a word or if you want to look at uh, the number of occurrences of a particular word, the Word Cloud is very useful for that. Uh, now, like I said, it is great for unstructured data. If you have a large amount of text, you can pass it in and it'll pass back to you which word appears most in your data set. Uh, and, you know, as you might expect, if you're doing something like that, you're going to have some words appear that aren't really that important. Things like a or the or an, those kind of words that just appear a lot whenever we write, but aren't things that are necessarily useful. And so to deal with that, the Power BI Word Cloud visualization also has included in with it a stop words property. And basically, that's where you can pass in certain words that you don't want to appear inside the Word Cloud. They even have a set of words that are already defined for you that if you flip on a property for the default stop words, it will remove things like the and a. But if there's other words that you find you want to remove as well, you can pass in your own version of those words that you'd like to remove. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Word Cloud, see how we can go find it and how we can use it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go to the Custom Visuals Gallery, which you can find by going to visuals.powerbi.com. Scroll down until you find the Word Cloud, which is right here. Go and select the Word Cloud and download that visual, make it part of your solution. So you want to download that and store it somewhere you can easily find later. All right, so I've already downloaded it for myself, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out and flip over to Power BI and walk you through how to use this one. Now the data set that we're going to use in this example is the one that's oftentimes used for big data examples, which is we're going to look at a big library of all of William Shakespeare's plays and use that to be able to mine through the type of data that he has or the type of words that he used most often and see which of those words are used most often. And maybe we'll also look at and see which of the characters had the most lines in a certain play. So what we'll do to do that is I have a CSV file that has all of William Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's plays in it. And so we're going to go up to the Get Data section here in the top to actually pull that information in. So I'll select Get Data. You could select CSV here, or you could also select CSV if you hit the down arrow and select CSV here. We're going to be using a CSV file this time as opposed to an Excel file. So I'll select CSV. And once you have that selected, you're going to go find the data file called Shakespeare Plays. Okay. And again, you should have that file available as a link below to download or part of the class files. So I'll hit open, and it's now going to bring me to a point where I can look at the data that we're trying to import. In this case, you can see there's some things we want to fix with the data first. So let's go ahead and click Edit as opposed to Load like we have done in the past. We're going to click Edit, and that's going to launch the Query Editor. And we'll make some additions and changes to the data prior to us actually importing it. Now, the first thing I'll point out to you here is you look on the right-hand side of the Applied Step section, you can notice here that it's already done a changed type transform on our data, which means it's tried to do some data conversions on here, and it's actually done a bad job of it. Uh, how do I know that? Well, if you look at this column here called Column 4, you'll notice that it's brought it in here as a date, uh, and that's actually not right. If I take a step back here to Source, you'll see that these are actually points in the play. They're not dates. So what I would do is I'm actually going to remove that change type transform first. All right, so I've gotten that removed, and now I want to do a few other things. Now, what I would like to do here is I want to filter out the data. Anytime there's a record in here that doesn't have a character associated with it, I'd like to remove it. So things like the opening act and the scene and what's going on behind the scenes, I'd like to remove those. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a filter on column 5, and I'm going to tell it that I want to bring in everything that is not blank. So I'm going to uncheck blanks and bring everything else in. There we go. Now, also something I'd like to do is remove some of these columns I don't care about. I don't really need all of these. So what I'd like to do here is I'm going to remove the columns called column 1, column 2, and column 4. I don't really need those three columns, so I'll select those three, right-click, and remove those columns, and it leaves me with these three. Now, I'll go ahead and rename these. These are called, this is my play column, so this is the actual play that we're going to be reading. All right, and then we'll rename this one character. This is the character in the play that has the line. Okay, and then the last one we'll actually name line because it's the line in the play. It's what they're actually saying here at the time. All right, so we've got the data how we want it. I'm going to go ahead and hit close and apply in the top left of the query editor, and that will bring this data now into the Power BI desktop designer where I can start to bring these into my custom visual. 
All right, now before we bring in the word cloud, what I'd like to do is also bring in a regular table so I can see the list of characters and the number of lines that they have. So I'm gonna bring in the character and also a count of the lines. So you can come over here and change it from just showing the lines like they are right now to showing a count of the lines by flipping this property here to count. That's right on the line uh, in the value section here and I can switch it to a count. And now I can see which of the characters have the most lines. All right, make this a little larger and actually make it so that the text is readable. There we go. And then I can sort these this descending so we can see it looks like this character is the one that has the most lines. All right, now what I'd like to do is actually bring in the word cloud and show you how the word cloud works. And basically look at the same amount of data here, or the same kind of data, and bring it into the word cloud though. So to do that, I'm going to go import my custom visual for the word cloud. I'll hit the little ellipsis here where it says import from file. I'll select import. And I'll go find the custom visual that I pointed you to earlier that you could download. It's the word cloud. I'll select the word cloud and hit open. And it will confirm that, hey, that has been opened. So I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to bring that new word cloud visual into my design surface. And I'm going to go ahead and make it, size it how I want now. Because I've noticed if you try and bring in the data and then resize it, it struggles a bit. So it's best to kind of shape it first and then bring in the data, I've noticed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in the data that I'd like to see here. So the, we'll start with the character. So I'll select character. OK, and you can see that brings that in here properly. That looks good. Now, one of the things you'll notice, though, about the word cloud is it looks like it's brought things in like first and second. And I don't recall and third here. I don't recall any characters being called first, second and third. But those are the ones that appear here most in the word cloud. And what you'll notice is if I go look in this data set here, let me sort this by name here for a moment and show you. If you go down to first or second, you'll see why it appears here is because first and second has the most frequency of the number of times that character is mentioned. You look here and see all the firsts that appear. If I scroll down to the S's and see second, you'll see second appears here so many times as well that it explains why the second is so large because it has so many instances of that character. Now the problem is what the word cloud does is it looks for one word. It doesn't look at the full character length. So it doesn't see second clown as being one value. It sees just second and that the second word appears many times within my data set. And so what you want to do in these cases where you really want to take into account both the first and second word or really the whole value that's inside the column, you would select the word cloud, go back to the format settings here. So I'm going to go over to the format settings for this. And then inside the format settings, what you'll do is you'll go underneath the general properties here. And underneath general, you'll see there's this option here called word breaking right here. And if you turn that off, like so, notice what happens now. When you look back over at my visual, you'll see here that it actually has no longer do you see first or second as being the most populated words. Now you see every one of the character names, even when they're more than one word, like this cardinal person here. Even when they're more than one word, they're still brought in. Now, you'll notice there's not a single one of them that is really emphasized over the other ones. And that's because, because we're taking into account the entire length of that value, like you see here on the table, there, there is no value that really appears here more than once, except for like the second gentleman. On a rare occasion, do you see a, a one appear here more than once? But usually when they do, it's because they're maybe spelled slightly different or because they have uh, spacing at the middle or in the end, that sort of thing. So in this case, what I need to do is really add some kind of measure here so that I can see which one of the characters has the most lines in a play. And so to do that, I would go back over to the field settings here, the field well, and I would bring in like the lines and get a count of all the lines that my characters have. And when I bring in a count of lines, you can really see here which one of the characters has the most lines in the play. And this actually matches up very nicely to what we see in the table. You'll see first value here and then Hamlet and uh, you know, all kinds of ones here. They match up appropriately to our table now is what we would expect to see. There are a few other things that you can do here as well. If you didn't want to see the word cloud to show up all here horizontally, if you wanted it to show up in different angles and different rotations, you could adjust that. You can adjust the rotation by selecting the word cloud and going back to the format settings. And you'll find on the bottom here, there's an option called rotate text. And if you turn that on, you'll notice when you turn on rotate text that it starts to adjust the word cloud and rotate the text to be more of a traditional word cloud that you may have seen before. You can also, there's some additional settings in the rotate text where you can increase the maximum number of rotations. So if I wanted to bump it up, instead of only seeing two rotations like we're seeing right now, I could bump it up to like five. And then you'll actually see the word cloud adjust here to show multiple variations on rotations like you're seeing here. 
You can also change the angle. So if you don't want to see it at a 90 degree angle or a negative 60 degree angle, you can adjust that in here if you'd like as well. And that's just the rotation possibilities that you have inside of the word cloud. All right, so that's one way you can use the word cloud. Let me show you another way. So this was looking at individual characters. We saw here uh, the number of characters aligned with the number of lines they have in the play. Let's go ahead and add another report. So I'm going to add a new page to the report down here in the bottom. And in this case, we're going to use the same exact data set, but I'd like to show you the word cloud a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and add in the word cloud first. And I'm going to make this take up a larger space here. That's fine. And with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to look at which words are used most frequently in Shakespeare plays. So to view this, I'm going to bring in the line property here, the, the line field. And you'll see we're going to see all of the, the, the words that are used in Shakespeare plays. So these are all the words that are appearing here inside of a Shakespeare play. You see a lot of A's and thes and that's and of's. Those are a lot of filler words that are placed in there that are maybe aren't as meaningful. So what you can do when you have a lot of those type filler words, you can use a property in here called stop words. And what stop words allows you to do is actually remove some of those filler words like a and of and they, the, we use those a lot, right? So if you want to get rid of those, you can go underneath the format paintbrush, go down to where it says stop words here and turn on stop words. And if you want to use this property, you can, there's a couple ways you can use it. You can manually type in stop words here. Or there's a set of default stop words that you can actually turn on here and use the ones that are already defined for you. So I'm going to turn on the default ones first, and then maybe we can enhance it a bit. So I turned on the default stop words. You see things like A and the are now removed out of here. And if I wanted to, I could add in my own stop words. You'll see sometimes there's just a single letter that's in here. I see D and S and O and things like that. If I want to remove those, I can actually come in here and just do a space separation between each, and I can type in D and T and... O and S, and it looks like a side is really big. A side doesn't really tell me much. So I'm going to remove a side as well. I'll type that in here. Uh, and you can really remove as many as you want. If you want to remove a typical Shakespeare word like thou, you can come in here and remove thou. Uh, I can remove within. I see within is taking up a lot of space, and that's not really meaningful to me. So I can type in as many stop words as I want, and then you actually start to see some more meaningful words that are appearing in here, and they're much more obvious. Now, in addition to adding stop words, you can also do things like change the colors. So if you want to have certain words show up in certain colors, you can do that. Now, keep in mind, we have thousands and thousands of words that are showing up here. So you're going to have to do some major scrolling to find the word you want. Uh, but that's something you can do as well. You can adjust the data colors. You can also add a border around this if you want. You can see the border appears around the word cloud. Uh, I'm going to undo the border. And then the last thing I'll point out to you is underneath the general section, if you go underneath general, you'll find in here, there's a lot of adjustments you can do as far as the size and the location of the word cloud, but also towards the bottom you have things like the number of max, the maximum number of words that'll appear in the word cloud. So right now it's set to 200. If you want to bump that up, you can do that. I think 200 is pretty fair here. And then you can also adjust the font size, the max font size. So the value that has the most occurrences, what do I want the font size to be on that? Right now it's set to 100. I can bump that up to something like 150 if I wanted to. Let's try that again. So I can bump that up to 150 here. You can see man and good and king are more emphasized in here. And I can lower the minimum text size if I want. Maybe I make that 10. And so it minimizes some of the words that just aren't used as often. And so here you can see maybe I want to add in another stop word for thy. That's coming up more, more prominently here now. Uh, Lord, man, more, king, good. All these kind of words in here. Now I can see what Shakespeare used most often. And so a really interesting way to be able to do this. Now, just to top this off, let me show you what I can do with this next, is I can bring in something like a slicer. So I'm going to bring in a regular Power BI slicer here, and I'll put something like the play in here. And so that way, I can slice by the certain play and see which plays use which words most often. And I can bump up the text size of this, of course. And so now I can say, well, show me what, Hamlet, what words Hamlet used most often. So I can select Hamlet. It looks like Lord and Good and Love and No and King. Those are the most often used words can select something like uh, Julius Caesar and see what was used most often there. Brutus and Caesar, no, no shocker there. So really interesting stuff you can play around here with. Uh, you can, of course, integrate it with other Power BI visuals like the slicer in this case. Very nice way to be able to integrate all these things together. And it does allow me to look at very large data sets and actually get some value out of those large data sets using the word cloud. Hope you guys enjoyed this module. We look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.